All right, let's get started. Well, there's going to be a few people getting up and down. Are you, am I audible enough? Okay, so I will, I will use this and try not to look behind me. Welcome to the Linux Australia AGM for 2014. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd like to open the meeting at 5.32. Um, so thank you, Cathy, for doing the minutes. She is the awesome actions uh, Cathy secretary who has been doing all the great minutes that hopefully, as diligent members, you have read every fortnight. <laughs> um, so there is a pad going around the room. I'm not sure where it is. It's over here. Uh, as a requirement uh, of being here, if you're a member, you need to write down your name um, so that we know that you're here. If you're not a member and you're here, that's completely fine. You're more than welcome to be here. You can become a member. Uh, you just, it's free. You go to linux.org.au forward slash membership and fill in your details. Um, right. So the other thing is we have some um, minutes and reports printed out in physical copies. If anyone needs a physical copy of, of what we're presenting this evening, uh, you can grab it from down the front here. Um, otherwise, they were all emailed out, and we will have, we'll be skimming over them, I guess, on the screen. So the first uh, piece of business is that um, we need to uh, accept the minutes of the previous um, AGM of 2013 in Canberra. Uh, and since I was present, I would like to move a motion that we accept the minutes of the 2013 um, AGM. Seconded. Yep. Uh, seconded by Michael Steele. Uh, so all in favour? Um, Any against? Any abstentions? Any abstentions? Yes. So, uh, passed with uh, half a dozen abstentions. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, now we're going to hear the reports from the office bearers. Uh, for those who don't know, I guess we probably should point out the current council that's about to dissolve. Um, so I'm the president. For those who don't know me, I'm Josh. I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself. Um, we've got Hugh as the vice president, uh, Kathy as the secretary, Francois for treasurer, Josh, Bianca, and Clinton as the other members of the council. So I emailed out a report that I did in my holiday, like all my work. Um, Oh, that just made that thing worse. Well, you can read that. So, um, I guess the, the, main, the main part of my report is how thankful I am of, of the community and the great work you guys do. Uh, in my opinion, I, Linux Australia, much like an open source project, is a community. And while the council does kind of help drive that direction, we're not the ones doing the work. We're here to be the kind of administrative and overseeing, overseeing body um, and, and, and the word I like to use is enable. And, and I think it, all of the members in our community do a really hard work of running the events, um, lobbying against issues, raising important items like that are really the people out there. And, and they really are the ones that deserve thanks. Uh, so that's kind of the bottom line there. But in 2013, there were seven conferences run, which I believe is a record for Linux Australia. Uh, so you know, I'd like to acknowledge all the people that did that. But because I was on holiday, I couldn't find the list because it's so big. <laughs> uh, these are minuted on the Linux Channel website. So that's how you can see who's been involved throughout the year. But uh, we've had excellent attendance to all of these events uh, and excellent feedback throughout the year. I think um, I should have loaded this. I did this because I was quite interested. And you can see um, throughout the year how much, well, throughout the time of Linux Channel, how much more we have done. Uh, if it loads. Has anyone looked at this uh, timeline? So, you know, since 99, uh, correct me, where, uh, Terry, when did Linux Australia form? We incorporated in 1999. Okay, we incorporated for Kalu? For Kalu, right. So, since we've been incorporated, we've run Kalu, LCA, for quite some years and successfully. We've run a PyCon AU, a Drupal, more LCA, bar camps, PyCons, WordCamps, Drupal camps, Linux camps, WordCamps, PyCons, Joomla, Linux, uh, Word, oh, now I'm going too fast myself. Well, it was a WordCamp, then a PyCon, uh, a Drupal thingy, a Joomla thingy, um, another bar camp, Linux, another Drupal. We're missing more things from here um, that are coming up, so. Yes. 
Yes, I, I was going to do that while someone else gave a report, but I can do it now. <laughs> we have a motion from the floor from Michael. I think I think Stephen second the first, did you? Uh, is there anyone against the motion? <laughs> We have 17 minutes to do the AGM. Do we have any extensions for this? <laughs> so one, one thing that I did want to do um, this year with the council is, is trying to make it less of a burden for the council, um, which meant taking our telecomps and making them as fast as I could. Uh, I think most of the time we got to 30 minutes uh, per fortnight. So that's about the minimum requ requirement of the council that we had, was a 30 minute fortnightly teleconf. Um, which in the past would take more than an hour. So I was happy that we were able to be that efficient during telecom. Needless to say, we were doing hours of work during the week, if, if not per day. So uh, in addition to the conferences that Linux Channel ran, we supported a total of seven grant requests. For those who don't know, Linux Australia uses its pool of funds to support um, grants that we feel are within our values. If you're unaware of our values, please see our website. Um, Francois will go over the amount we spent there a bit later. Uh, in similar to the grants program, we have travel grants to get people to this conference. Michael, how many people did we manage to send? Uh, and thank you to Michael for running this program. It depends how you count it. Uh, I think it was six delegates, but one of them required physical assistance. So it was seven humans. Seven humans, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so AV have got the slides. Would you like me to power cycle this? When you change the power, um, you drop the external Shall I do it anyway? I'm trying to listen to an AV person, sorry. Okay. Well, if that doesn't come back, let me know. So, um, continuing on, we, did, we had a travel grant which got seven humans. I didn't understand the difference there. Um, we did some donations, so um, the, these are things that the, the council felt that it was worth spending money on. The, Francois, were you going to touch on the software um, foundation thingy, a uh, freedom thingy? Okay, I'll let Francois do that, because I, I quite like how we came up with that number. Um, the sponsorship, uh, so we sponsored two kind of other events that weren't ran as LA events, so they were GovHack and the Australian Internet Governance Forum. Um, we have a bunch of other subcommittees that help Linux Australia, its events and its members continue to run. The, they are as listed. You will note that some of these subcommittees are lugs. So that's where Linux Australia is providing a um, entity for other lugs to form so they don't have to go through all that annoying paperwork. If you are a lug, talk to us. Um, so one of the big changes that we introduced this year was to the Linux ConfAU bid process. Uh, if you didn't see the mail, the quick summary is we have selected linux.conf.au for 2015 and 2016. These will be announced on Friday during the closing of this conference. <gasps> Sorry, I was very excited about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that Pia's bidding for 2016. <laughs> Which asked for 2017 now, but clearly she was disappointed. Um, <laughs> oh, you wanted to know who won? Yeah. It's a secret. Oh, you won't be here? Oh, I'm sorry. I can whisper later, maybe. <laughs> Bribe me. Um, the <laughs> um, so th there's a couple of reasons for it. We outlined those reasons on the mailing list, but the, the bottom line is it, it's to ensure the continuality of this conference. Or the continuation, I should say, probably. Uh, so next year, we're going to take bids, or this year, sorry, now that it is this year, we're going, <laughs> we're going to take bids for LCA 2017. Uh, and so anyone that is uh, interested in running a Linux conference uh, would love to have a chat to you. Feel free to pull me aside this week. But otherwise, I think maybe tomorrow lunch, I will send a proper email. No, let's go Friday lunch, so more notice. Uh, we'll meet out in the grass outside the thing and we'll have a bit of a casual chat about it. But I will send an email with some more details. 
So if you are interested about running a Linux conference, start thinking now, start talking to other people in your city, um, and you might be able to bring this conference to your city. So uh, we also did a bunch of advocacy, sorry, advocacy and outreach, uh, largely thanks to uh, Kathy and her great internet skills. Uh, and, and also largely thanks to Kathy and her great internet skills, we did a survey. Um, I won't take her thunder, she can cover that in her report, is that alright? Um, whoops. So, survey. Um, so in, in 2014, uh, I think it's very important for our community to continue to be engaged. Like I said earlier, it's, I don't see it as the council's role to be doing all the work. We don't have time to be lobbying on every issue to the government uh, or running every event. Uh, and it really is the volunteers that run it. So um, if you're not volunteering and you would like to help out, please have a chat to us. If you are volunteering, keep up the awesome work and thank you. Uh, specifically, I think for 2014, one of the, our challenges as highlighted um, by the survey is we're a little bit poor at communicating to people who don't know us intimately. So those who follow us on lists and things probably got a vague idea of what we do and that's largely thanks to the minutes. But people outside of that uh, group probably need a bit better communication too. Specifically our website is in dire need of um, a bit of a refresh and <coughs> upgrade uh, to make sure that's sustainable. So if there's anyone in our community that you know or yourself who would be interested in helping out with that, we'd love to hear from you. Drupal skills are nice, but if you don't like PHP, that's understandable and we can talk to you anyway. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm trying to get out there, uh, you've probably heard, is volunteers are awesome and thank you, and if you haven't volunteered, we'd love to talk in a nice way. Uh, and I guess that's my conclusion. So um, I would like to give a round of applause to all the volunteers of all types. So thank you, volunteers. <laughs> Now, I'm going to take questions for my report. We'll do the other reports, take questions after each one, and then we will um, do the formal motions to accept them. So any questions to what I have spoken of? Yes? What was the donation to the software that you were doing? That was in relation to software they are developing for um, uh, doing accounting systems. What, what was it called? I'm sorry for this one. <coughs> The, the, the actual name I've forgotten, but it's accounting software. And the number, I, um, I think it was my idea, but don't correct me if I'm wrong, okay, good. I, I don't want to take credit for other people's work. <laughs> yes, it, it's currently targeted for non-profits. So it's very, it's very um, specifically targeted. It kind of suits us, but not at the same time. So as an organization, for those who don't know, it is very sad that we use proprietary software for our accounting and we'd like to use open source software. Sadly, nothing exists that meets our requirements. Uh, the Software Freedom Conservancy are working on something that is closer and we donated money to support it. The amount we donated was a penance for our sins. I mean, we multiplied how much we spent out on zero and paid them that much. So it's the exact same amount we spent on proprietary software. Uh, as an unofficial thing, I think it would be nice to do that again in the future if we, if we think we can actually make this software happen. Uh, whether or not it does will affect whether or not we continue to support it. Uh, any other questions? Oh, excellent. All right, uh, so I'd like to invite Francois to the floor to present his treasurer's report. So, Josh has already covered the first part here. Um, so what I'm going to present is um, how, how we've tr uh, tracked uh, compared to, how we've done basically compared to the budget that we had for the year. Now, the thing that's a bit weird about uh, my report <clears throat> is that um, unlike the other reports, it doesn't cover the, the same um, period of time. My report covers the last financial year, which ended the 30th of September. So what you're seeing in this report is one third the previous council and two thirds this council. So just keep that in mind. So this is uh, the budget that we had on the left column and the actual amount that we spent. Um, now, 
part of the, so you'll, you'll see that there's a couple of amounts where it was, wasn't quite right, uh, wasn't quite on budget. That was mostly due to me not updating the budget um, after the council, uh, basically, the new council took over. So because the new, the new council takes over and a third of the budget has already been spent, the new council should actually review the budget that was proposed by the previous treasurer and adjust it according to their priorities. So it's fairly close, but um, there's a few things where the council decided to uh, increase spending in certain areas, and uh, so that's why it doesn't line up um, uh, all that nicely in certain cases. Um, now, things worth pointing out, I guess, are uh, the, what the grants here include is $19,000. That, in, as a footnote, it includes um, the uh, regional delegates program from last year, last LCA, uh, DrupalCon at Sydney, GovHack, Rails Girls, um, Open Food Web, and the Software Freedom Conservancy stuff that Josh has uh, mentioned. Now, um, other things that are worth pointing out in here, uh, I guess, are like things like the Zookeeper Hackfest was uh, happened during PyCon, so it's uh, much cheaper than expected. And um, then uh, you'll, find, you'll see that, fortunately, it looks like PyCon uh, did not make a profit, made a loss, but that's actually misleading because the money, like, there's some sponsors that haven't paid yet. And, um, in fact, they have paid, but it's outside of this financial year. So yeah, that's why there's a footnote. Um, other than that, um, so that's, the, that's how we track for this year. Uh, if you look at the auditor's report, so for the year, I'm not going to show you the whole report because it's a little bit boring, but basically the end result is that uh, we have a loss of uh, $8,000 for this year which is uh, less than what, we were, than what we were planning on losing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the budget for, last, for, for the last year, financial year had uh, expenses of 68 and revenues of 53. So we lost less money than we were planning to, I guess, is the end result. Um, so that's for budget here. Now this year's budget is um, Fairly close, a couple of items were adjusted and there's explanations in the footnotes. Um, we're um, expect, so we're, we're gonna have four conferences here. Um, LCA, this conference, uh, PyCon, Drupal South Wellington, and Joomla Day Sydney. So those ones will be um, happening in the next uh, financial year. And that's a bunch of things. And I guess the other thing that I'll mention is that we, as, so Josh has been treasurer for three years, and so I spent um, a good amount of the year sort of catching up, learning the things, and transitioning various accounts and things like that. But it was a great opportunity to sort of clean up a few um, accounts, uh, so some people had access to accounts that they shouldn't have, and that kind of stuff. So just clean up all of this, this stuff uh, and change the signatories on all of our bank accounts, this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's mostly just admin stuff. Did you want to do the orders before you do questions you want to do that? Um, well, I'm not sure exactly what I should cover in the auditor's reports. Um, like the, I guess it's a lot of numbers. Lots of boilerplate as well. Um, I don't know. I, I'll go. I'll, I'll, let's have a look at it if people have questions, but otherwise. Uh. So, are there any questions? Yes? Um, what is the expected? Yes, it was. So 20, PyCon AU 2013? Yes, because it mentions as yep. footnotes that there was some late payments to sponsorship. Uh, uh, the expected profit was 7,000? Yes. And, uh, and we, we have exceeded that already in, like, in the next financial year. Ah, so, yeah. Excuse me. If you want people on the recording to hear, you're going to have to repeat those questions and answers. Okay. So the question was, uh, what was the question? Like, what, <laughs> <laughs> what was the expected profit of uh, PyCon? Oh, I, I believe the profit of PyCon AU is over $8,000. What's the question? What's the answer? Question. 
the question, what's the, what's the profit of PyCon AU as of uh, 30th of December 2013? And I believe that's over $8,000. But that, that number has not been audited. So that's what I'm talking about, the previous financial year. Any other questions? Yes. So Um, the question was in the past. In the past, the amount of uh, the, the the goal was to keep um, as much as it costs to run LCA, basically in the bank account. Um, is that still the plan? Um, yes, we don't want to change that, so we want to keep as much money. Yep. In that case, why are you budgeting rental loss? Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking about unmissed loss. The question. I think the question was that. Um, if I'm wrong, that LA operates off the profit of LCN. Not so much. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> so the fact that from what I've read, go to Mike. Do you want to say? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that yeah? That's working. Um, so, from what I read in the in the report, the total funds we've got is about four hundred grand, and the total expenses of an LCA is about five hundred grand. So, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but the the idea has been to not um, basically if we if if an LCA has to be cancelled, that we we can afford that, and we and that we can run one next year, and so we're still. So what, what's, what's about the figure you're aiming at for the balance then, for how much money you keep in the bank? Sorry, can you repeat the question? What's the figure you're aiming at for how much money you keep in the bank? Um, roughly, I mean, what we've got is, is roughly, like it's, it exceeds what we need. So we can eat a little bit into this, but not too much. Okay. So, you know, more or less what we have. But. Might as well add something. Sure. So, um, it would be lovely if we had a volunteer to do a cost-benefit analysis. But uh, specifically, um, to give some background, we looked into uh, how much it would cost to ensure the conference against cancellations for things like floods, and it was a lot of money. It was like 50k a year or something. But uh, what we what we decided was that if you actually look at what how much money you need to cancel conference, it's significantly less. But it's really variable. So for example, some universities take massive deposits up front or even full payments, and some just say, no, nah, we'll just pay after the conference, it'll be fine. Uh, so we don't really know how much we promise them. And then you don't know how much you get back on depending on the date you cancel. So if you assume that we get back zero deposits, uh, zero venue costs and that kind of thing, you're looking at you know, tens of thousands, close to $100,000. The venue cost is around under 50, usually. Sense of venue. Uh, catering, you usually will always get some money back because they haven't actually spent the money on the food. So you may lose tens of thousands in deposits, but you're not going to lose the hundreds of thousands that are actually spent on catering because we haven't opened the bottles of wine. Uh, and then the end result of refunding delegates is a non-issue because we had received their money, which we wouldn't have otherwise had, that we can then give back. So in terms of how much money we need to keep in our bank account, you're looking at around the 100k mark. And that's kind of what we figured, but we just did it in our heads like that. We didn't do a cost-benefit analysis of actually doing the insurance. We just got sticker shock at 50K. Um, I think this is a reasonable approach. I mean, clearly we have a insurance for everything else that we need. Um, does that kind of help answer your question? Okay. You have a mic. Yeah, I'm asking if you're allowed to use it. Yeah. So the, the other thing I'd point out is um, it's hard to estimate the cost base of the conference. So in 2013, we booked accommodation for delegates, right? So we stood in between. And so if you look at our bottom line, we spent, um, I don't know, I'm going to make up a number and say it was you know, high tens of thousands of dollars more than, say, this conference where they didn't. We paid directly with the venue. So you, know, you would have to take that sort of stuff into account. You can't just look at a random year and say, therefore, it costs this much to run a conference, because the arrangements do differ each year. And also, uh, what I forgot to mention is a lot of people's travel insurance actually helps us because they will get money back from there instead of us, potentially. Depending what it's for. Like, we don't, we don't have to reimburse people for cancelled flights because it flooded.
so I think that's a. I think I'm uh, following up with a, what AJ has said. I think that's been a bit of a divergence from what uh, previously we've done. Normally, the, the what we had previously is that the thought was we should have enough funds to fund a, an LCA uh, Alpha Bank balance. To, to fund an LCA, what's it? To fund an LCA just off 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 our savings. Right. Right, to be, able to, to be able to do one from cash. If you know, if we didn't get the money from the delegates and sponsors disappeared, we could still at least run the next LCA. So when we budget for an LCA, we don't include sponsors. Therefore, uh, we budget to break even on sales alone. So the only way that we could uh, lose money on an LCA is if we didn't charge delegates. And, and that's, I can't see how that would happen. In terms of having enough money not, not to say that we wouldn't want to run a, a free conference, that's a different conversation. I just meant if we continue the same model, we, we charge. Um, but in terms of having enough money to actually be able to do that, then you're just talking about a cash flow issue. And I think it's about the same number that I mentioned before of 100,000, because in terms of what the cash flow you need up front, it's the venue uh, and catering deposits. It, and, and the thing I, I mentioned before is it's very variable. Um, so, so, so the comment was that uh, 100,000 seems a bit low and that we should go for the high mark rather than the low mark. Yeah. And while I do agree, I think it would be better to do some analysis on what is that high mark. I don't feel that we need more than the 100,000, but that's also because I feel very safe because we have closer to 300. Yeah, so just to clarify, I think that we're probably splitting hairs here, but I think that you know, this might be something that needs to be looked into. Uh, I think that AJ's concern was just that you're budgeting for a loss in the next financial year, and that is this sustainable. So, sure. you know, generally speaking, you shouldn't budget for a loss. Do you like to answer that? Amen. Free chat, brother. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I'm not the one that pick, that's picking the budget. Like, it's a it's a council thing, so I don't, I don't want to speak for the whole council. Um, but no, yeah. I'm not saying it's wrong, yeah. but. So, like I said before, we're a community, and the council is here to kind of be an administrative body. And the noise that we, well, not the noise, the, the kind of feedback that we heard from the community a few years ago is that we're not spending enough, and we have this money in the account, and we're not doing enough. We're doing more. You saw, you saw what I presented. Um, that's much more than some previous years. Uh, and if there's a response on the floor that maybe we need to be more conservative, then that's something we can take on board. I feel like uh, the, the amount we've budgeted has come to that number for two reasons. One, we underestimate how much return we will receive from profits. So the profit, mar um, the expected income is much lower in, in Francois's report. And two, the expenses are budgeted based off what we spent last year. Basically, Francois looked at how much we really spent and use that. So if we realistically don't want to make a loss, it's actually not that hard to spend less. And if we realistically did the numbers and put pressure on our volunteers, then we could spend even more. I feel like this is a comfortable balance for where the feedback of the community is that we have the funds, why don't we use it? Worst case, well, kind of like a, a, a median case where low income, high expenditure year projected, which hasn't happened by the way, uh, we will make a, or what did you say, a 20k loss? It wasn't big. This year we had um, several conferences that we weren't expecting to that turned a profit, so we may well have those come up again and turn a profit this financial year. Yes, but this, this we year can't we... really predict that. This year we have accounted for them returning a profit, um, mm. which is interesting because we, we don't require them to. Mm. But that said, this, um, these amounts are still conservative in, in the profit they return. I think the first PyCon, Chris, returned like closer to 20k or something, right? Uh, 2011. 2011, yeah. And, and in, in years since our PyCon, oh, sorry, can I have the minus sign? Oh. Uh, so, if I recall correctly, uh, 2011, the second Sydney year, made about 20k, and in the years since, uh, we've made a much more concerted effort to spend money on things like grants and such like that, mm. hence reducing our yeah. profit. 
And so, and so the, the reasoning here, right, is we never asked PyCon to return money, and yet they consistently did. So now it's in our budget. We're still not an expectation place on PyCon to return money. So perhaps there's a risk that we will not receive money from them. But like I said, these estimates are still conservative when you compare 7 to 20. Okay, so two things. One, um, thank you for the, I'm glad you've thought about the details in that, and thank you for the explanation. And the second thing is, um, since you, your, the Treasurer's report is up till September, is there any possibility of that coming out earlier rather than at the start of January? Sorry, can I just put an Anthony? Yeah, it's Anthony again. Oh, sorry. So is, is there a possibility of the... Of the Treasurer's report coming out closer to the end of the financial year rather than the start of the next committee's council's um, reign? Yep, that's a good suggestion. The, the delay there is doing the audit. Yep. I think getting the Treasurer's report out earlier is unrealistic. Getting a budget out earlier is something we should do. Yeah, a, a draft. I, I certainly think we could see a budget earlier. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely see a budget earlier next year um, because I, I plan on doing that. Um, in terms of have it, seeing the report, um, it depends on when the audit is finished. But, you know, it, it would. It, it should, it, Is there, is there a reason to wait for the audit before publishing the report? Uh, I'm not comfortable publishing numbers that have not been audited. We have found uh, a few mistakes in the, while doing the audit, and we fixed them, so, yeah. Brianna, uh, I just wanted to say I'm very happy that the council is spending the money in the community, in grants, on events, to have a more vibrant community, I feel that's exactly in line with the council's values rather than just hoarding 300 grand that is not doing anything for anyone except a bank balance. Does anyone ride up the back want to ask a question? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, it might be a bit silly, but it might be worth um, actually putting a motion that says something like um, that the com community generally agrees with, with that principle and wants to see more of, of the same. Uh, Pia, are you proposing a motion? I'm proposing a motion. I put a motion to put a motion. Can we uh, get a motion? Yes. Okay, I make the motion. I think Paul needs hand up first. So sec seconded by Paul. The motion is all right. The motion is that the community agrees that this, the expenditure of funds on community benefit projects, such as what the council has done for 2013, is in alignment with what the community wants to see happening. And should continue. And should continue. And to continue. So that if that was. Are you still comfortable to second that now formally proposed <laughs> by Paul Waper? Uh, all in favour? Yeah. Any against? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't think you can. I'm think joking. It was a joke. Yes, uh, I'm joking. Any um, abstentions? Uh, three, four, five. Right, so Last five abstentions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Go. All right. Um, so now I'd like to invite Kathy to the floor, and I can take some notes or something. They won't be nearly as nice. Kathy, sure. would you like to? Uh, thanks, Josh. Um, 2013 was my first year as secretary, and thank you for those who nominated and voted for me. I'd also like to uh, just say a word of thanks to Peter Leverdink, who isn't here to, uh, who isn't here at Lennox Conf in Perth this year, but uh, who did an excellent handover with me, and uh, some of the achievements you've seen this year are, are due in part to Peter's handover. So the job of the secretary is basically to organise stuff and make sure that minutes and agendas happen and that they go out. And I think that's something that we've done very well this year. Uh, in 2013, we held 24 council teleconferences. We achieved quorum at 24 council teleconferences and minutes. <laughs> And minutes were usually issued, usually within uh, about a week of each teleconference occurring. So um, I know that sounds like a very minor thing, but 
we did it, we did it well, and we set a pattern for uh, how we'd like to continue in the future. Um, just a quick note, we did face-to-face -face in Melbourne in March and undertook media training, and uh, that was an incredibly beneficial experience, and we did some excellent strategic planning, and if anybody's interested in uh, what we discussed, we'd be very happy to share that with you. Uh, most of it was uh, publicly minuted. Um, we saw uh, um, gradual growth in our membership throughout the year. Uh, uh, on average, uh, sure, question from the floor. Do you want to do it at the end of that? Um, uh, Am I reading that right? The, the, the numbers look wrong in the reports? Uh, that's, a, um, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I'll tackle that one now. I'm sorry, I didn't grab your name. Sorry, Jan Schmidt. Jan Schmidt. Um, Jan, that's a very good point. The reason that we have a discrepancy in the membership is the way that Member DB is currently reporting members. The previous report was actually erroneous and contained a number of duplicates. So the new figure contains the removal of duplicates. Um, and we'll have to change um, slightly the way that we do reporting to make sure that it's consistent going forward, but it's a very good question. Um, we haven't done renewal of memberships this year, so anybody who has ever signed up and told us that, uh, and not told us that they don't want to be a member anymore is in Member DB. When we did the survey, which I'll get to a little bit later, we identified that we have a number of stale memberships within uh, Member DB, and uh, I'd like to address that as a priority in 2014 if I'm elected tonight. The um, membership survey was something that, um, uh, and I hope I don't speak for all of council or uh, put words into your mouth inappropriately, but that's something that I think we can all be very proud of this year. Um, we had nearly 600 respondents to that survey. We guessed that we'd have 300 and I got a call from Maxbury to say, hey Cathy, we, we hit 550, we're probably going to get to 600. So I'd also like to note uh, a huge thanks to 600, the 600 people who took uh, their time, their very precious and valuable time to respond to that survey. It's given us some excellent data, which I'll touch on uh, to, to take us forward strategically over the next few years. Uh, we did a little bit of work with media and communication during 2013. Um, the two key activities that we, we used there were to increase the use of Twitter, which I know is not an open source tool, but uh, we don't really have a viable um, alternative at the moment. Um, we increased our Twitter numbers by about 35% over the course of the year, um, just through organic, organic follows. Um, and I'm hoping to get that up to about the 800 mark next year. The, we published an inaugural newsletter in around April. Uh, and we also formed a media and communication subcommittee. Uh, we have had some interest in that subcommittee, but uh, if you're interested in media and communications and helping us to promote what we do to a wider audience, I'd very much be interested in, uh, uh, in, in having a chat with you. Um, so just some very boring type things. We handled a large volume of correspondence. Uh, most of it was publicly minuted in our meetings. Um, there wasn't anything that was uh, untoward or which I believe would be a, um, a basis for controversy in this meeting. The key thing that I would like to just spend some time uh, time on, and I'm going a little bit off the, um, off the top of my head here because I don't think I included the... Um, uh, the summary of the survey in my report, which is a, an oversight. Um, Do you want me to pull that up with my report? Uh, that would be brilliant. Thank you. There we go. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm not sure how many people have had a chance to have a read of the member survey. I, I wouldn't mind just a show of hands to see. Okay, so quite a few people. Excellent. Um, it does make for a good read. Um, Axbury did an excellent job there uh, statistically. Some of the key points coming out of the member survey, um, some were expected, some were unexpected. One of the unexpected points was that we have a previously under-recognised um, cohort within our community who identify as retired, who are um, hobbyists, and have specific needs for basic and introductory information about Linux and open source, and we're not servicing those needs very well, so that's something that we'll um, take into our planning for 2014. 
We also have a poor pipeline of younger and student members that requires attention. That wasn't so much of a surprise. So we need to do some work going forward to identify how we address, how we address that pipeline problem and whether we need to take any specific measures to build our um, uh, build that side of the pipeline uh, and it gives me great heart that uh, um, the motion previously um, is quite supportive of our activities and I'd like to um, bring some attention there. Uh, as, Josh noted, as Josh noted, we have a need to do more advocacy, influence and promotion activities and that's something that uh, I'm very, um, very passionate about doing in 2014. Uh, we also um, had a strong um, a strong theme comes through the member survey that we do need to keep Lennox Confeu affordable for the majority of delegates. So that's something that we'll work with the LCA teams with in the future as well. Um, <laughs> the highlight for the report for me um, and the touch point uh, with me during communications activities was that for many members the survey was the first communication they'd received from Linux Australia and some of them were very, very surprised that they got an email from someone who they'd never heard of to say, uh, please do a survey on an organisation they'd forgotten they joined. So that's something that I'd like to change for, for 2014. Uh, we've also released all of the data for the survey uh, in open format. So if you're um, interested in that data, the only, ident the only information we've taken out are, um, are offensive words. There are only a couple and uh, any identifying information that was in that data, such as email addresses. Uh, and if it's not in a format that you'd like, have a chat to us and we can probably provide it in a format that you do like. Um, it is a very, very interesting survey. I probably haven't taken all the insights out of it that, uh, uh, that are in there. So if you do have a chance, please have a read through and uh, share, share your thoughts with us on list. Um, and that's about it for my report this year. I'm very happy to take questions on the report from the floor. Chris.